All right, the second problem here, we've got um, a double shear joint loaded in tension, tension in the plates themselves. So there's three plates, that's double shear because there's literally two planes of the bolt are carried in shear. If there's only two plates being joined together, loaded in tension, that would be a single shear joint. Uh, a double shear is, is common because it, um, it splits the shear in half for one, and it also removes bending from the bolt. You can imagine if it was only two plates, these loads F and F over two uh, would be they'd be even in that case, but also they'd be causing sort of a twisting moment in the bolt itself, which you don't have in a double shear joint. Uh, plates are steel, clean, dry surfaces. We're going to need that to calculate a friction coefficient, or rather look up a friction coefficient. Uh, the bolt is tightened to full proof strength. Um, that's it's not a, not a bad assumption in this case because this bolt, uh, the only tensile load in the bolt is the actual tightening load, Fi. Um, there's no external load loading it in tension, so I can tighten it basically right up to the strength of the bolt, and it's not going to, I'm never going to add additional load in that direction, so it should be okay. Um, now, we're going to calculate shear in two ways, or rather we're going to calculate failure in two ways. The first one being, uh, what if we just want to make sure that the bolt itself is not actually carrying load? And what that means is that as the thing is uh, loaded with this force, there's a lot of friction generated between the plates when you tighten the bolt. That friction carries a great deal of shear. So calculating the amount of force F that can be carried in friction is a fairly valid kind of thing. If, if you know the joint itself is never going to slip, then the bolt is never going to take the shear. Um, on the other hand, you should get a good bit of strength out of the shear of the bolt. So we're going to actually, on the second pass, calculate the amount of force it would take to cause the bolt to fail. And that is for it to literally shear clean off on both of those planes at the same time. So those are the two calculations that we'll carry out. Uh, at the beginning here. Now the statement that the bolt is loaded to the full proof strength, uh, I'm going to look up for this bolt which is a half inch 13 UNC AT is equal to dot one four one nine inches squared and for a grade 5 SAE bolt SP is 85,000 PSI. <clears throat> so with those two numbers I can calculate the initial force in the bolt as SPAT which is 12,060 pounds. Uh, now another assumption that I want to make in um, well this will be when I get to the shear calculation but uh, I do want to make sure I'm looking at it as the full diameter of the bolt is on these shear planes. That is, the threaded portion is outside the shear plane. Uh, it's bad practice in general to load threads and shear this way, so in carrying out the calculation, I'm going to assume that that's not the case, that I'm loading the full shank diameter of the bolt in shear here. But again, that will come in in part two of this solution. So I'm going to calculate uh, failure such as it is in two ways. The first one being slip. Uh, now, steel on steel. Which is dry. Um, I looked up in some source. This has been a while, so I don't remember exactly where. But the coefficient of static friction, mu, is about 0.4. And then, and, and we're just going back to statics or dynamics here, where if you're calculating a force due to friction, it's the normal force times the static coefficient of friction. The normal force here is Fi. So if I multiply Fi by that static coefficient of friction, I get an actual force F, which can be carried by the bolt itself. So the friction force call FF is just FI times mu. FI was 12,060 that gives us 4,824 
that would be the force generated in on one side of the joint uh, between one of the outer plates and the inner plate. But since there's two surfaces that are bearing the friction, we actually are going to double that. So this is for one plate. Doubling that, we get 96.48. That's for both plates. That's, that's basically the first solution. Um, go ahead and mark that. So what we're saying by calculating that force is that if F, that's the force directly applied to the plates, exceeds FF, slip occurs. doesn't mean that the joint has come apart or anything like that. It just means that the friction can no longer handle the external force, which means the bolt is now handling the external force. And when that is the case, uh, when that becomes the case, we need to figure out how much, um, how much force the uh, bolt itself can handle before it shears off. So that'll be the second part here. page in here. Alright, so in bolt shear. Shearing of the bolt, we're actually going to use the yield strength of the bolt to calculate failure. SY for a grade 5 bolt is 92,000 PSI. The reason for that is that proof strength, again, that's based on a threaded bolt being loaded in tension. In this case, we've got the solid diameter loaded in shear, so it's not the same type of loading. Proof strength is based off a of tensile load. This is a shear load, so we're going to go back to the yield strength. And since the, the stress we're going to be calculating is a shear stress, we're going to end up making comparisons to the yield strength in shear, which is dot five seven seven times SY or 53,080. So that's the strength we're going to compare it to. And we need to actually just determine the area that's loaded in shear. Um, so if we look at the actual failed portion of the bolt, the area that we want to calculate is it literally shears, that is just cuts clean off on that surface and that surface at the same time. So we want to know the area of those two surfaces together. It's just a circle with the radius of the bolt diameter, or excuse me, a, di a diameter of the bolt diameter, and we have two of them. So two, pi over four, one half squared. It gives us dot three, nine, two, seven inches squared. Now we can calculate a, well, essentially, there, there's other, there's more general ways of going about this, but if you recall the, uh, the basic stress equation here, the factor of safety equation, all we have is shear, so the shear strength divided by the shear will give us uh, a factor of safety. I'm just going to set the factor of safety equal to 1. SYS is 53,000. And then the shear is just going to be the force over the area. And solving for that, we get 20,810 pounds. <clears throat> now both of these calculated forces, the 9648 for slip, 20,810 for shear, these are based on the failure of the bolt itself. And in the initial problem statement, we actually said that we'll assume that the bolt and the plate have enough strength to prevent uh, any failure other than bolt shear. However, in designing actual joints of this sort, it's uh, determining if the joint itself is strong enough is another important part of it. So in the next problem, I'm going to take the same basic type of joint 
uh, give it some geometry and then calculate stresses in the joint itself.